Get Healthy Cincinnati from the Christ Hospital Health Network and these local partners. My name is Lisa Cahill, PhD. I'm an ASHA certified audiologist licensed to practice in the state of Ohio, and I work with the Christ Hospital Audiology Center. Actually, there are many causes of hearing loss, probably too many to list here. Um, hearing loss can be congenital for many different reasons. A person can be born with hearing loss due to a congenital anatomic malformation. Um, you know, there can be something hereditary. Um, there can be an exposure to something ototoxic in utero um, when infants are born with hearing loss. Now, um, when we're talking about postlingually developed hearing loss, whereas a person is acquired a hearing loss later in life, um, say perhaps with aging, for example, it's normal to experience some wear and tear on the inner ear over time just due to normal use. And so that's primarily, you know, the most common cause of hearing loss is when a person is just gradually losing their hearing with, with overuse over time. Now, it can vary from person to person, you know, whether it starts at an earlier age, or progresses more rapidly. Um, that can vary from person to person just based on how much noise exposure they've had and exposure to certain medications or other ototoxic agents like secondhand cigarette smoke um, that can lead to um, earlier progression of hearing loss. And then there are certain pathological conditions that can also contribute to hearing loss in some cases can be corrected through medication or surgery, but usually in my practice, we're dealing with hearing loss that's irreversible and that's been acquired over a long period of time due to a number of different factors. Hearing loss doesn't necessarily discriminate to a specific population, so you can acquire a hearing loss at any age. However, the most common individual that comes into the practice is someone over the age of 65 because um, I would have to say that probably at least 80% of the population over 65 has some hearing loss, whether they know it or not. Um, we get a lot of people that were military, people that worked in industry and were noise exposed, um, and a number of people that have just had more noise exposure, exposure than the average person. So that's probably the primary population we're looking at, but anyone, anyone is at risk for hearing problems. Signs of hearing loss may be very subtle. Um, a lot of people don't notice that they're acquiring a hearing loss. In fact, I see patients every day who are surprised that they have a hearing loss. They were just coming in to have their hearing checked because they thought it would be a good idea. But we end up actually finding a hearing loss and they really kind of argue with it a little bit because they feel like they're doing fine and you know that their conversation ability isn't impacted all that much. Um, you know, so signs of hearing loss might vary from person to person, but by the time a person notices that they're struggling, it's usually because someone else has noticed the problem. And the person with the hearing loss is often the last person to realize that they have a problem. And so, you know, spouses, family members, children, friends, colleagues are telling them they need to get their hearing checked. And so that's usually the reason why a person pursues a hearing evaluation because someone else told them that they needed to get their hearing checked. But if they are noticing that they're having a hearing problem, it's usually that in noisy environments, they're losing speech intelligibility, needing to ask people to repeat what they said and misunderstanding what someone said. And these misunderstandings can lead to communication breakdowns and eventually affect relationships. There are a number of ways a person can prevent or slow down the progression of a hearing loss. Um, usually we're talking about noise protection. So if you're not noise exposed, I would say that there's probably not a whole lot you can do that the hearing loss is not related to noise exposure. Um, you can't necessarily stop it. There's no medication or treatment that's gonna stop a hearing loss. And whether or not you pursue hearing aids, your hearing is gonna do whatever it wants to do. It could get worse after you get the hearing aids. It could stay the same. It could get worse or stay the same regardless of whether you get hearing aids. So the hearing aids are more of an assistive device to help you communicate better and continue to function well in your everyday situations. Um, but preventative measures that you can take if you are noise exposed, you can wear hearing protection normally can be purchased over the counter at the pharmacy or in your audiologist's office. There are also some custom fitted devices if you have severe noise exposures like you work with heavy equipment or you have a noisy hobby. We can take ear impressions and make custom fitted noise protection devices that will give you more, um, more of a protection than just over the counter ear earplugs or earmuffs.
Many people use ear level devices now. In fact, studies have shown that there's a higher incidence of hearing loss in the younger populations today. And it's speculated that this is because of ear level worn devices such as iPod earbuds, cell phones, etc. And most of these devices do have a built in volume, volume limiting feature. Um, you can even passcode this volume limit. Say if your child has an iPod, you can program you know, a passcoded volume limiter so that they can't go in there and crank it up louder when you don't know about it. Um, most kids can crack these codes today. <laughs> I've learned the hard way, but um, it's good that those limiting devices are in there, that you have the, a way to limit what you're exposing yourself to. You're not gonna accidentally turn it up too loud because particularly with the ear level worn devices that we have today, the earbuds, um, they don't mask out external noises. And I think the purpose is so for safety so that you can hear what's going on around you. But conversely, when it's noisy in the room that you're listening to the earbuds in, you're gonna crank that volume louder to hear it over the noise. And so you're exposing yourself to louder volume levels than what you intend to and what you really mean to, because you don't realize how loud it is until you take it out. We accommodate to noise too. And so have you ever gotten out of your car after you had the radio on, you were in the house for a while, then you had to go do something else. You come back out, you turn the car on, and you forget that your stereo was up so loud, and it blasts you out, and you think, I wasn't listening to it that loud, but you were because you adjusted to the loudness levels over time, and you just kept turning it up, turning it up, and turning it up because your ears adjust to the loudness, and it craves more. So that's dangerous as well, especially in the closed cabin of a car because those sound waves are just reverberating inside your car cabin and exposing you multiple times. When you come in to see the audiologist, there's a number of tests that we perform to investigate your hearing. So the first thing we wanna know is whether or not your ear canal is healthy, your eardrum is working fine. So we do some preliminary checks to make sure everything's healthy and working properly. And then we do a pure tone test where we try to determine how loud sounds have to be at a variety of different pitches that are important for everyday hearing. And so we test those pitches that are in the conventional range of listening, try to find out what your thresholds of hearing are. And so once we have that picture of how your hearing is processing different pitches, um, we do some word lists and try to get you to repeat back words. So how loud do the words have to be in order for you to hear them well? And what percentage of words can you repeat back correctly at a conversational loudness level if you can't see our face or have any contextual cues? So, um, you know, if we see any problems there, we can discuss that with the patient as far as how, um, you know, their hearing levels are going to affect their communication ability. Um, you know, so we go at it from that angle, most often trying to discuss impact on everyday life for them, how it's going to be in certain situations, you know, whether they're going to struggle in a noisy environment versus a quiet environment, TV, what kinds of situations they're in every day that might be affected. Well, the audiologist is academically trained and licensed to make determinations as to whether or not the patient needs a referral to a specific medical health care professional. So if the audiologist sees a medical problem or if something that indicates a pathology, or possible pathology in the hearing test, then we recommend that the patient see either their primary care physician or a specialist of some kind, usually ear, nose, and throat specialist, to um, rule out the possibility that some medical treatment is needed. But if the physician determines them to be medically clear, at that point the audiologist would be discussing options for amplification of the hearing loss. Making sounds louder is kind of the general way we refer to it. However, hearing aids today are very advanced technologically and there's many different features that can be added into the hearing aid signal processing um, you know, to make it do what we want it to do for that person's hearing loss, for their lifestyle, all the listening situations that they're in. So hearing aids in general amplify sound. Um, there's many different styles, so you know, there's different appearances of the hearing aids as far as what you know, the patient wants the hearing aid to look like. Um, or if they want something that's less visible, we can try to work with that depending on their hearing loss. But um, you know, there's multiple different styles available out there, but the technology is really where you get your listening benefit. So we have more basic features that are kind of standard on all hearing aids as far as signal processing, and all hearing aids are digital now. And they all are programmed via computer interface. So we can get in there and make fine tuning adjustments to the hearing aids based on their hearing loss and what kinds of complaints they have about the way the hearing aids sound. We can really fine tune it to their listening preferences. So a lot of it is counseling and trying to figure out what the patient needs and fixing the hearing aids to do whatever it is the patient needs it to do. 
Um, but there's also many advanced features that can be added to hearing aids now as well. Uh, there's a lot of noise control features that gives the audiologist the opportunity to fine tune how the hearing aid responds to noise um, and extraneous sounds that maybe interfere with speech for the patient. Uh, it's never going to make it better than normal hearing, but it can give the patient a better response than has ever been possible in the past. So, um, and then even more of a step beyond, hearing aids have the capability now of connecting with external devices to make listening more pleasurable, more easy for people with hearing loss. So via Bluetooth or streaming, you can connect your devices wirelessly to your television set, your cell phone, your iPad, your MP3 player, whatever external devices you have that have streaming capabilities can be connected wirelessly to your um, hearing aids for direct listening. And so that's been a great help to many patients too, especially patients that are very active and are still doing a lot of things in life and want to be connected with others. Brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network, 5WLWT and The Inquirer.